So today we're talking about making a wooden picture frame to go around a painting. First thing we need to do is decide the actual dimensions of the piece. We have 49 by 34 exactly. Now what we'll need to do is for the face of the frame it will need to be about a quarter of an inch less than that so that it covers the edges of the piece. We don't want to cover too much because we don't want to have wasted painting this thing this size but we've got to make sure that the face of it will cover it so that it looks clean when it's finished. And this piece, the framing on this painting is an inch and a half deep so that will take a little bit of wood. We want to make sure that we get a nice frame and that it covers all the way to the wall in the back so we'll need to make sure that we make it at least an inch and a half deep so that it covers cleanly to the wall. For this particular frame I've decided to use select pine. Uh, this select pine doesn't have any knots in it which is good. If you have to cut it it won't break. It's also very straight. Very important to get straight wood. If you start with crooked wood it's extremely difficult to make a good picture frame. So the first thing I'd like to do is we'll glue up the wood something like this. That'll be the first step. Then we'll be able to take this basic shape and go around the edges of the painting with it. Notice how that's going to be nice and deep. Deeper than it needs to be. I want this frame to look pretty chunky on the wall. So I want this profile and the painting will sit nicely inside it. So now we get to the gluing part. Basically, we can't have enough clamps, but I only have two. Now, it's good if you get, like I was saying before, very straight wood so that this is a little bit easier. You may have to look down the side of your wood to see if there's any gaps that are going to be potentially harmful to the glue holding well. Now, we have four sets of six foot pieces like this to do our painting. Obviously we're going to need a little bit more wood than the painting dimensions itself because the outside of the frame is angled and will cover around the painting edge. So we'll need a few more inches. Uh, so I decided that four six foot sections will be adequate for this particular piece. We'll have a little bit left over but we'll be able to do it with four solid sections. So, we want to carefully glue this. You don't want to get too much glue in your joint because if you end up staining, then you'll have parts where the stain won't take because there's, too, there's glue saturating the wood. So you need to be careful to put just enough glue, not way too much. So we'll put just enough glue in here to hold it together, keeping in mind this is just a picture frame. It doesn't have to be structurally super sound, it just needs to be sturdy. So we'll get enough glue in that joint to hold it together. And then we'll get the pieces mated together and they'll probably slide when you place, especially if you have a little extra glue in there, they'll slide around on one another. So even though we have very straight wood, it may be that you'll have a slight gap in one end or the other. And it seems like our slight gap is going to be on this end. I'll go ahead and clamp, make sure that I put the clamp near this end so that it fixes that. And 
you'll want to keep a check, as I was saying, to make sure that your board doesn't slide too much and that your placement gets messed up because the edges of these two on the outside is critical to this looking tight. You'll have a little glue that will squish out on the outside, and that's normal. You can wipe it up with a damp paper towel to keep everything clean. And as I was saying, you definitely want to make sure that you buy enough wood when you start your project. Um, get a little bit more than you need. Seems like we have that clamped down pretty well. And here is a previously glued piece. This is what we'll be working with. So now we can see the depth that we're dealing with on this frame. This is the same width as the painting itself's frame. So what we'll essentially have is this much space to work with, which is good. So this, we're going to get a, a thick frame. We have plenty to work with here. What we'll, pro what we'll end up doing is we will cut the, the frame here at angles to, to suit the, the sh outer shape of the picture itself. And we'll make sure that the inside probably about that much overlaps the painting itself and once we've gotten all four of these pieces glued up and dried then we can take this to the miter saw but before we do that we may decide if we want to embellish the fronts of this with something with a router we can go ahead and do that before we cut that way we can ensure that we get nice clean routes and we can decide as we're sitting here waiting for these to dry what it is we want this to look like. Now I've often taken a routing bits and cut parts out of the front just to separate two halves. That way we could uh, do, say maybe we could paint the inside of this one color and the outside another color. It's very easy to do that once you've gotten a nice routing dip in there somewhere. And we, Depending on the size and the width that you want, you just pick whatever you want. But we may not do that with this one. We may just round over the two sides. But uh, we'll, we'll do that before we miter cut this. If that's what we want to do, we may just leave this block. I'll decide what we want to do, and then we can figure it out once everything is dried up good enough. I've decided that I would like to round over the edges of our frame. So I'll use the router to do this, and I have a rounding bit that puts a nice curve on the corner, knocks the corner off. Now, it's a good idea before you do any routing to check to make absolutely sure that when you route you've got your settings correct. So you'll, you'll want to use a test piece to make sure that it doesn't leave anything, that your bit's not set too high or too low, and that you get the expected results before you put your real piece in. check to make sure that the roundover worked and it's really nicely adjusted right now. It didn't leave any mark here from this being set too high 
and I didn't get too much of a bump from the bearing as I went through. So the setting is nice and we're ready to go ahead and do the round over on our actual piece. Since we know what lengths we need, we can go ahead and trim this piece down so that it's more manageable in the router with the miter saw. This cut's not critical. You could go ahead and just cut it a bit longer than it needs to be. So we'll go ahead and cut one of the side pieces with the miter saw to length before we run it through the router so that we can manage it better. Be very careful when you're cutting down your frame not to cut it too short. You know on the short side we have 34 inches but we're going to need quite a bit more than that to go around the edges with the angle. So you want to check the width of the frame itself which is almost four inches and you'll probably want to you want to just go ahead and double that so say we need 34 inches we'll want to go ahead and make it twice that width of longer than 34 inches to ensure that we don't cut it too short I'll go ahead and cut it at 44 just to be sure So now we're ready to cut the round off on the edges. Make sure you know which edges you're working with. This is the side, this is the front. We'll take, we'll take the rounding off the front. smooth round. Now that we have all of our pieces glued and routed, we're ready to start doing the miter cuts. Uh, we need to make sure, since this is the front, and uh, assuming this is the shorter piece of the two, that uh, we know we have a 34 inch painting that we're trying to put into this. So what we need to do is cut this so that the very inner portion of this is slightly smaller than that 34 inch opening, or the, the painting. And the, the longer sides, of course, being 49 inches, we'll need to make sure that the very inside of that miter cut, they're slightly smaller than the 49, so that they will, it will fit. So we go ahead and begin our cuts.
So I've got one end of this cut. The other side, I've made sure that on the inside of this angle from this point to this point is less than 34 inches. the other piece it's best not to just measure but to compare the two so that when you cut the second piece it's exactly the same as the other one regardless of the exact length you want to make sure that they are both the same length that's the more important thing to keep up with so now we have both side pieces which are exactly the same length as one another and we will repeat the process for the top and bottom parts of the frame. So we've repeated the process for the top and the bottom parts of the frame. And now we have all of our 45 degree angles cut. Now we want to lay this down on as flat an area as possible so that we can fit it together and see if, there are any, if there's anything that we need to go back and work on. You may have to go back and recut some of your cuts if things don't quite work out the way they should. Now I've cut some small blocks and these will set the painting inside of the area of the frame where we want it to stay. These will make sure that the painting doesn't go below one quarter inch here one quarter inch there and on each side and that will ensure that the painting stays within the center part of the frame so now we need to go ahead and attach the frame pieces together we don't want to use too much glue especially in the front because we won't be able to go in there and check to see how much glue that we have probably want to glue it very sparingly and I think for this one I'll use a brad nailer for the top and the bottom. Since this frame is so large, you probably won't be able to see the nails at the top and the bottom after they're attached. So we'll begin to glue. Probably want to, attack, want to apply more glue to the side parts. since it won't be all that critical whether that glue comes out or not. So we'll slide these pieces together. nail them so that they stay in place. same for this side. Thank you. 
ready to place our little blocks that will hold the painting in place. I'm going to put two on the bottom and the top and only one on each side. Of course the two on the bottom will be the most critical because the weight of the painting will be sitting on those two. All it'll take is just a little glue to hold these in place. And now we just leave everything alone until it dries. So we've allowed the frame to dry overnight so that the glue could set. So we are getting close to being complete. And now you may want to take some wood filler and fill in your nail holes. Unless you chose to clamp it together, which you would not need that. So also want to probably at this point sand your edges to clean the entire frame up getting any excess pieces off that you don't want cleaning up any wood filler sanding and wood filling completed, we'll check to make sure that the painting fits well within the frame. And it does. So what I've done is cut four little wooden blocks and pre-drilled the holes. These will be the tabs that hold the painting into the frame. I'll just screw two of these in for now and we'll get a look at how it looks from the front. Now to hang this painting, we can either use the frame of the picture itself since it's very sturdy, or we can go ahead and, hang and put a wire to the inside of this frame. Or we could even put a hook on the top it's really up to you. So here's how it looks hanging on the wall. You can finish this any way you want. I'll probably stain this one since this pine is nice and has no knots. <laughs> 